<laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It's better just to experience the presence of God than to have someone talk about it. <laughs> oh. It's better to just eat the words of life than to have a Pharisee quote them to you with full of death. You know? The Bible is a portal either from for Hades or from the kingdom of heaven. You know, the letter that kills, you know, <laughs> the scriptures in the mouth of a religious Pharisee will only make you more religious if you receive those words. But the scriptures in the mouth of the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ, through his children, will bring you life, will energize your spirit, will, get, will strengthen you with might in the inner man so that you can withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. A lot of the times, the fiery darts from the enemy are scriptures quoted by Pharisees, by scriptures quoted through religious people to try to put you into bondage. But we know that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, to demonstrate that freedom, to walk in that freedom. And, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't have no need that any man teach you. You have the Holy Spirit who teaches you through man, through, he can even teach you in your own spirit. He can teach you through any way possible as long as you're, you are connected, you are complete in him. He is your head, right? So if he's your head, you're the body, you think with his mind. <laughs> not my thoughts, but your thoughts, God. Not my ways, but your ways, God. Yahweh, the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for the narrow road, Lord. Thank you for words of life to empower our spirits. Thank you that that flaming sword burning in our heart just brings us closer to you. God, I pray right now that all the wood and the hay and the stubble that is in our hearts, everything that we put temporarily in there, that we sucked it in through the world like a vacuum cleaner, that you would just burn it all up now in the name of Jesus, God. Consuming fire of God, come and burn up all of our idols, come and burn up all of our mindsets, come and burn up all of our plans. So long only that which is perfect and holy will remain in Jesus' name. Only your plans will remain. That's the truth. When the storms come, only what God has built, only what's been built upon the rock will remain. All the hay, the stubble, the plans of man. That's what Pharaoh wanted, you know, the children of Israel. He slaved, he made them slaves. And you have to go out and get your own hay and build bricks. You know, just slaving for religion, slaving for the Egyptian religion. <laughs> you don't have to slave. You're, all, you're, you're a slave to Christ. His yoke is easy, man. You know what his yoke is? Being, just being yoked to him and following him and just hearing his voice and loving him. Just doing what the Spirit of God wants to do. Hallelujah. Shabbat. So God, we just put all of our affections, all of our thoughts, all of our mind, all of our hopes, all of our dreams, everything inside of you, God. And I ask, I thank you since that we delighted ourselves in you. Since we put our delight in you, you will give us the desires of our heart and remove all the desires that we put there. <laughs> delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> he will give them to you. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. You know, he'll author and perfect your faith. Because the more you hear him, the more he stuffs you full of revelation, stuffs you full of the word of God and breathes his spirit life on it. The more he stuffs your spirit full of the anointing to make you pliable, make you oily. And then he'll light you on fire and make you the light of the world so that the world can taste and see God, that he's not angry, that Jesus took the beating. The more you'll realize it's really easy, this yoke of God, just being yoked to the Lord is really easy. It's the slavery and the taskmastering of religion that's hard. 
you know, all God requires of us is that we remain in the Son. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He came out of the baptism waters, right? This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The only way to please God is to remain in the Son. That means you die to yourself and you let the Son live His life through you. You're, you're bought with a price. It's no longer you anymore living, but Christ living through you. That's being yoked to Him. And then as you're yoked to Him, you realize what your new nature is, because you've been born again, right? It was actually the original blueprints <laughs> that Adam went and lost when he sinned. When he sinned, selfishness came in, and uh, the image of God was kind of lost, and he took on the image of Satan, which is the sinful nature. Yeah, but Jesus Christ came to redeem us from that. He took the beating, so God's not angry at the world. All the wrath, all the anger, all the judgment went upon Jesus Christ. Now God is just arms wide open for all who will come in. He said, go to the byways, go to the highways, go to the go to the bars, go to the parks, go to the go to the job sites, go to the bus stops, and let them come to my feast. What does God want? He wants you to come and feast upon what the marriage supper, like what He's prepared. What is the will of God? What is the desire of God? It's found in John 7, I believe, or 6. The will of God is that you hear His Son. The will of God is that you be in His Son. The will of God is that you eat His Son. That you go to Him and you feast upon Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. So as you feast upon Him, which means another word for that is just commune with Him, spirit to spirit. As you commune with Jesus, you, you see what the image of God is. You see what you've been restored back to. And you, you get born again, literally, by the Spirit when you receive Him. To all who received Him, He gave them power to become the sons of God. It's in John chapter 1. What is that? It means you returned in a perfect circle of love. You went in this, this chaotic thing called the earth, but then you've returned to your Father in Christ Jesus. And you've taken on the image of God. What does that mean? So you can have the communication abilities to communicate with God. He that is born of the Spirit is Spirit, and God speaks Spirit so you can communicate spirit to spirit with your Father through Christ. <laughs> March boldly to the throne room of grace to receive grace in a time of need. Well, if you need to hear God, you go to the throne room of grace, which is in Christ. It's in the most holy place inside of you. You don't take a rocket, a NASA rocket, and fly into outer space to try to find God. I'll just stop for a second and just take a deep breath of that fragments of the Lord right there. <laughs> oh, test yourselves whether you and their faith <laughs> test yourselves whether you and their you <laughs> Holy Spirit. Oh man, test yourselves. <laughs> Do you not know that Christ is in you? Do you not know that you are in the temple of the Holy Ghost? You got a ghost in you. <laughs> Your house is haunted with glory. You know, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that we'll never have, they don't have to go here or go there. We don't have to go into the mountain. We don't have to go into a building. We, we just go to him by faith of what the blood of Jesus purchased for us. You enter through the precious blood of Jesus into the Holy of Holies and experience the living God. Listen, if you want to get to know God, you don't get to know God through letters and ABCs and 123s or alphabets. You get to know God through spiritual experience because God is spirit. <laughs> the Word of God is a doorway, not, not for your brain. The Word of God is a doorway for your spirit to enter into bliss. 
you go through the Word of God. I've walked through it many times. It's like God will just highlight a verse in the Bible to, to me. And then within that week, I'll get sucked through that verse into like spiritual experiences, sometimes within the very same hour, sometimes the very same second, I'll have an experience or a revelation will explode. You read the Word of God with the mind of Christ if you want to have His understanding of it, spiritual understanding, you know, or you can just read it naturally as a histor history book and just never have any fruit, you know. The Word of God is a door, you know, John chapter 10, you come in and out. You, go, you enter into these glory realms the more you read the Word of God. I just finished reading the book of Proverbs out loud. That's why I'm kind of on this Word of God kick. But uh, there is a lot of glory when you read the Word of God with the mind of Christ. And you can enter into similar experiences that the people in the Bible had. Because as you read it or as you speak it out loud, read it out loud, something happens inside your heart. Where it's like, wow, if God did that for them, God could do this for me. This is just a spraying shotgun message. It's not really, it's not for your brain, it's for your spirit. <laughs> so as you read the word of God out loud, it's like something gets triggered inside your spirit. or Some, some, some fire, like a spark will just go off. God, if you'll do that for them, you'll do that for me. If it's available in that day, it's available how much greater in this new covenant. And then you just have a desire. God's giving you the desire of your heart. But you unravel it by walking with Him. God, what is it when their heart's burned? Trust me, you will find out if you pursue God. More than just what's written about God, I want the God that this, this, this Bible is written about. And then you start entering into those experiences that everyone in the Bible had for the reason why it's even in the Bible. I mean, Adam didn't, you know, Moses didn't have a Bible. He's, he had to have a relationship with God. And then it was penned down. He knew, he knew he was even going to die. Like, who wrote that? <laughs> oh, uh... So I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is like the image of God is spirit. It's not in your human nature because that's why we're supposed to put that to death by the spirit, right? Put to death the deeds of the flesh. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't bring your human nature into heaven. You've been born again, right? So all things are made new. You're a new creature. You're a new creation. What is that? It's the image of God. You've put to death the old man, and you've been risen up in the new man, in one man, in the man Christ Jesus, and that's your new nature, so you can live out of that nature where that nature hears God. <laughs> that nature walks with God in the cool of the day, in the fray of battle, and the arrows flying. That nature is the Word of God, made flesh. That nature makes you a living epistle written by the finger of God upon your heart. You know, every single one of us are a living stone built up into a spiritual house. A stone is a revelation of Christ, the cornerstone. So people, when they see Christ in you, they have a, rev a revelation of what God is like and, they sh and you show them what's available. So your life is a living epistle. You don't have to like Try to drag people into heaven. <laughs> if you try dragging people, in, a lot of people, God won't let them in. You know, <laughs> the only thing you can do is just project Christ onto people. And then they decide if they can taste and see that he's good, then they have their own decision to make. You just let them know that there is a feast going on. This marriage supper of the Lamb. It's the, the door is wide open in this season. The door is wide open for all who are hungry and thirsty for something more than the world. <laughs> something more than the, what the world or the earth has to offer. Everything is found in Him. Like the, there are realms of the presence of God that you don't even know about. There's realms in glory that you've never experienced. 
there's anointings that you never felt or experienced or I mean man just an angel showing up just striking the fear of God into the atmosphere and everyone there that's that's exciting you know just go just ha in worship you're worshiping God and then you know your eyes open up and you see him just how much he loves you by him being on a cross and just pouring out his love you don't see it because he's not just saying it it's being manifest to you by the spirit which is the highest form of language is spirit to spirit. It's not English or German or French. It's spirit because that's the language that was before flesh was even created. And you just see God. You experience God and you see his love for you through a, a spiritual experience. And then you don't have to, when someone says like, I don't know if I don't believe in God, you've already met God. No one can convince you otherwise. And you can say, well, I don't know if God loves me. Well, you don't have to say, you can't say that anymore because you've experienced the love of God. You may have read it in the Bible, but now you have the fruit that remains. That's why I said if the only way you can get to know God, it's, it's not through the alphabet or memorizing scripture because Pharisees members memorized the scripture and they didn't know Jesus standing right in front of the living word of God. It's when you had an experience with God. Mary sat at his feet, worshiping him, pouring her fragrant, expensive oil, giving the best she had on Jesus' feet because she experienced something. Who was that who was caught in, in adultery? Was that Mary? <laughs> or someone, the woman caught in adultery? I can't remember. Hallelujah, the Gospels. I'm still growing in grace. <laughs> you do grow in grace. She had an experience with Jesus. Wow, more Lord. And that experience changed her. It wasn't that someone said God is good and he loves you. It's like if someone says God is good and he loves you, that, that spiritual life should be coming through their words and it should hit your spirit where you could enter in through those words and have an experience with the love of God. I was in worship one time and uh, I saw that whole scene unfold before me where the, where the woman was caught in adultery and I could see the, I could feel the atmosphere of the Pharisees, the accusation, you know, Satan is called the accuser. You know, this woman was in sin. She was caught in the act of adultery and all the Pharisees are just condemning her. And uh, they even quoted the law. They quoted the scriptures, the Pharisees, saying to Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act. You know, the law says to stone her or whatever, but what do you say? You know, they always have, a, the wicked always have ulterior motives. They wanted to condemn Jesus like they're condemning the woman because that's what Satan does. He condemns. That's all he knows because he is condemned. <laughs> so that's he can only project what he has, you know. And Jesus projected who he was after he knelt down and he was writing in the sand, writing in the dirt. The one, the very creator who created mankind out of the dust of the earth. The very creator who wrote the Ten Commandments saying, Thou shalt not commit adultery. He was writing on the sand finger of God written by the finger of God he's writing in the earth I don't know what he wrote maybe he was writing the Ten Commandments maybe he was rewriting you know human history maybe he was maybe he was just prophesying into the dust say my blood's coming and I'm gonna change you you're all gonna be free if you receive me I don't know what was written there God does I didn't see what was written I wish I did but it's more, I, I like it. I like the mysteriousness of it. You can just go off and just like, wow, Jesus, what did you write? You know, what did you write on the, write on the tablets of my heart? Let it be a blank page, you know? Just, I want you to rewrite me. <laughs> Even today, this, today was so prophetic. I'm going off on a little rabbit trail. I'll, I'll be back in a second. I open up my Facebook. It was totally white. 
It was a blank page, man. It was like, wow, Facebook is prophesying. We need to decree into the atmosphere the Word of God. <laughs> I opened up three different browsers. I could not get to Facebook today. I opened up Firefox. I opened up the, the Safari one. And I opened up Google Chrome. Couldn't get to my Facebook. So, you know, I decided, well, I'm going to read the Bible out loud then. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got a blank page today. Jesus, come on, right with the finger of God in this heart, Lord. So back to the story, he stands up and they're still like, you know, they're, come on, Jesus, we want an answer. <laughs> Moses says to Stoner, but what do you say? You know, and I like what one translation says. It says, he stands up and says, he who has never sinned, let him cast the first stone. He who has never sinned, let him cast the first stone. And then they all began to be convicted. What wisdom was released through Jesus? That's the wisdom of God. They all began to be convicted. I wonder if he was just kneeling down, waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell him what to say. I wonder if he was just waiting upon the Lord. Because the sons of God only say what they hear their father saying, or they only do what they see, you know. Maybe he had a vision. Maybe he had a prophetic vision. I don't know what happened. But I know that when he stood up and said that, they all began to be convicted, but they went the wrong way. They were convicted by his words, but they, they went away from him. He was the answer to the conviction. But they left her, him and they left the woman. His accusers or her accusers left. They should have just went to Jesus, but... His blood wasn't spilt, so they didn't have the understanding yet. But now it's too late, because I'm telling you now, since the blood of Jesus has been spilt, we go straight to Him, no matter what we've done wrong. And this is His response. Is there no one to accuse you? And she's like, no one, Lord. She called Him Lord. And He said, neither do I, con neither do I accuse you, neither do I condemn you. And I saw like, I, I, I saw from her perspective, it's like in this vision, I was watching this whole thing unfold and I was, I was, I looked at Jesus and he's had tears rolling down his cheeks and the love of God is oozing out of him. And he said, go and sin no more. It's like his lips were trembling. Go and sin no more. Lest the worst thing come upon you. It's like, and the love of God went right through that woman. She had an experience with the love of God that empowered her to go and sin no more. It wasn't the pointing finger saying, don't ever sin anymore. It was the love of God saying, go and sin no more. She saw love for the very first time. She knew lust. That wasn't love. She knew the love of this world, which was not conditional or the love of this world i mean was conditional but the unconditional love of god even in her sin because we know that love covers a multitude of sins it was demonstrated right there that day when the love of god came out of her the rivers of life came out of his eyes and his heart just wrapped around her saying go and sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you and it made me cry. It was like, oh my gosh. You know, the worst thing I, that could ever come upon me would be to, to spear him after him opening his heart so wide for my sake. It's like the love of God just washed away the shame that was thrown upon her through the Pharisees and her own sin. And he said, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The difference between her and the Pharisees, she was an all-out sinner. She knew it. They left Jesus. She went to Jesus. She marched boldly to the throne of grace and received help in a time of need. She should have, according to the law, she should have died. She should have been stoned to death. But Jesus didn't come to bring death. He came to bring life. 
He carried, he was full of grace and truth. Grace is the spirit of life. Grace is the empowerment to walk above the sin nature. Grace is the image of God busting through you so you don't have to walk in the image of the fallen nature of Satan anymore. Grace is the love of God manifest through Jesus' face. At the end of all my videos, I, I always say, well, I usually always say, you know, grace <laughs> to your face or something like that. May the grace of God come through your face. What I'm saying is like, may Christ be formed in you fully so that it's no longer you anymore, but Christ in you, the manifest glory, washing the world from darkness, sin, sickness, hell, all forms of wickedness, because that's what washes away the wickedness in this world. It's life, the river of life. It's grace, great grace, God's grace, Christ's nature formed in your face, written by the finger of God, read by all humanity, nothing forced, it's an easy yoke. You just yield to him and you just watch him unravel who he is through you and around you. And you'll see all the double-mindedness in everybody. People will want to worship you one day. And then they'll condemn you the next. <laughs> you just keep walking with God and forgiving. You know, you don't pay attention. You're like Zacchaeus. You don't pay attention to those who accuse you. You stand there and you commune with Jesus face to face. You're not moved by opinions. You're only moved by God's Spirit. Opinions of men are double-minded. You know. <laughs> Holy shaka, man. <laughs> oh, shama namana. Shikoro boso torebeshe. So, as I said earlier, I read that story. It didn't really change me. When I had the spiritual experience of that story, it changed me. It wasn't the letter of the law that was, it was the spirit that brought life to those letters. So that that Bible story wasn't just. A Bible story anymore it was a reality to me that God really is unconditional love and he really wants everyone to come into the marriage supper of the Lamb for all who will hear his voice saying come come and eat come and feast come and drink the table is set come and sit at the king's table there's no other way to get to this table but through the precious blood of Jesus and receiving his grace receiving drinking his cup you take your cup you put it down and you drink from the king's cup and you receive life evermore life more abundantly you take away what you've been eating feasting on the flesh the desires of the flesh and you take his food which is communion feasting upon spirit filled words his spirit filled words that change you from glory to glory you know, it's good. I would encourage you all to just remain in the Word of God. Like, read the Bible out loud. I, I read, you know, 10 chapters today out loud. I felt so good. And I make a whole bunch of mistakes, but that's okay. I, I don't focus on the mistakes. I focus on the author and perfecter of my faith. And he makes up for the mess that I make. <laughs> oh. It's not what we can do anyway. It's only what the Spirit of God does through us that remains forever. Everything else is just, you know, wood, hay, and stubble. But rock, revelation, you know, that's the firm foundation. We can build upon nothing else but that what is laid. Jesus Christ, which is Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray that you would increase the hunger of God. I pray that you would just release hunger for thirst and a thirst for righteousness, God, in everyone who's pressed play or listen to the podcast. If I even make it a podcast anymore, who cares? God, we just need to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness so that we don't choke ourselves with the dust of the world. So that we don't fill ourselves, fill the well of salvation full of earth dust, which is serpent food. And then we can't draw those rivers of living water out because we're so full of dust. 
We can't shine the light brightly because it's all covered up in dirt. But now all we have to do is march boldly to the throne room of grace and receive through relationship your words. Through relationship we can experience the living God. Through a relationship we can we don't have to like sit under any taskmasters. We just have we're just you know nailed to the master, <laughs> nailed with the master on the cross. And risen up in glory in heavenly places far above it all far above the problems of life. Okay, this past week, I've had like the hardest week uh, you could even imagine. Like, it seemed like everybody was angry and projecting stuff on me. And uh, it even came on me, the pity party. I just mentioned this in my last video, but the only way to escape that stuff is not dwell on it, not focus on it but to focus on the author and perfecter of your faith. Just keep doing what you've done that's grown your spirit, man, that makes you strong with might in the inner man, and then your spirit outgrows the natural realm, and you can walk in his victory. Yeah, I think we're done here, because I'm, I'm getting a little bit hungry. <sighs> More life, Lord more peace, more love, more joy, more of the fruit of the Spirit, more Shekinah, more Kabod, more Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, and Jesus reveals the Father. So you really need to get to know Holy Spirit. He's my best friend. When He talks to me, it's like life from another dimension. It's like I'm in the highest realms of peace that you could ever experience. When Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's like His words wash right through you. You feel so accepted. You feel so comfortable. He's the comforter. And even in the midst of chaos, just Him brooding through you makes all the difference. Like you could be sitting where every single person around you hates you and isn't accusing you, just like that woman caught in adultery or something like that. And it's just, just being near Jesus or just being near Holy Spirit or just being near the Father and the presence of love, the presence of peace, the presence of just acceptance in the beloved just far outweighs anything that this world could ever give us. Any idol, any comfort, any distraction it just fades in the, into the distance and you're just left alone with Jesus. And then you realize, wow, this really is the will of God that I know Jesus, that I feast upon Jesus. <laughs> and He reveals the Father, but Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. So it's like this perfect circle of love where you get, the more you get to know Holy Spirit who's been sent to, you know, to form Christ in us, Holy Spirit. Oh. There's so many, there's so many directions I want to go right now. I actually want to stop the video and just lay on my bed and drink His presence. Another part of me just wants to demonstrate what it is to go into the secret place of the Most High God. Maybe I'll just make another video and, and go there. Or maybe I'll just go there right now. Who cares, Shaka? Let's go there right now. He that dwells in the secret place, the Most High, will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place, that secret place where you go, that secret place is the first love gate where you go to meet with God in the intimacy chambers of your heart. Let's go right now. Let's just go. Why waste time? Why just get information for a brain when God is here to bring us deeper into Himself? You go into the secret through the precious blood of Jesus, right through those nail scarred hands, through the precious blood of Jesus is the kingdom of heaven. 
and you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into God. You keep pressing in. You, you know, the angels are there. That's great. The, the saints are there. That's great. The, the grass, the flowers, the everything there is great. But you're one. Well, he's the one I want. God, you're the one that I want. God, I thank you that you've made the way. I thank you. I receive the precious blood of Jesus. I march boldly to the throne room of grace, God. I just come to you. I draw near to you through my heart right now. I just draw near to you in perfect surrender. I just I don't hold anything back. If there's anything that I'm holding on to you right now, I just yield it all up to you right now, God. I give you that. I give you all the desires of my heart. I give you the desires in my mind and the plans. Because I know that you have the plans for my future. God, I thank you for all the prophetic visions that I've had in the past. Thank you for speaking to me. And that's just your language. God, but I'm hungering and I'm thirsting for more of you. I'm hungering and thirsting for more of your voice. I'm hungering and thirsting for your presence. I'm hungering and thirsting to hear the words of life. I just want to be like Mary where I just sit at your feet fully forgiven. I don't want to have to do a bunch of things that wear me out like Martha and get all frustrated because I, because I'm doing all these things for you and I'm just not seeing the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> I just sit here, Lord, in you. You and me and me and you. I've been, I, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all the distractions of the earth, the opinions of men, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh. I'm, I'm seated with you, Christ. And I've tasted myself to see whether I'm in the faith, and I know that you're in me. And I know that I'm in you. We're one in the Spirit. I've been born of the Spirit. And now, Father, I come to you in the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple that you've given me. Inside this temple, just like that fish's mouth, there's there's a precious coin. It, there's, there's such value. There's like a pearl of great price inside this, in this field, God, hidden inside. And it's my spirit, man. Inside my spirit, man, is you. Inside my spirit, man, is your heart. Inside my spirit, man, is the life of God. And out of my belly will flow rivers of life if I just knew who you are speaking to me. And the gift of God, the gift that you've given me, is yourself. The gift of God. And I know the word of God. Father, Jesus, if that's you, just give me word to come to you on the water, and I'll come. Jesus, if that's you, just give me word to come up through that, that, through that door in, in Revelation chapter 4, and I'll come up and see more. Jesus, if that's you, if that's you, I come to you. Because your Father is well pleased when I'm inside of you, in the depths of your heart, in the depths of your mind, in the depths of your spirit. When I'm in you, and you're in me, in you I'll live, and I'll move, and I'll have my being. In you I live, in you I move. In you I have my being, in you. I'm surrounded by glory, I'm surrounded by your presence, I'm surrounded by the shield of God, which you are my armor, you're my faith, you're my shield, you're my salvation, you're my peace, you're my words, you're the sword of the Spirit, you're my atmosphere, you're my life. I surrender all mine to receive yours. I thank you for what you've given me. I thank you for the life that you've given me, which is in Christ Jesus. I thank you for the intimacy that you've poured out to me. We, because you first loved me, I can love you now. Because you first loved me, I can love you and others who you love. Because you first loved me, that love can cascade out through my heart, through my mouth, through my mind, 
through my body to those who don't have your love so that they can taste and they can see that you are truly God. You are truly love. You are truly calling all humanity to come and feast. To come and feast at your love. To eat the revelation of your love. To eat the revelation of your goodness. To eat, without holiness, we can't even see you. But in holiness, you project who you are through that holy realm, <laughs> through the Holy Spirit in us. You just shine through the windows of our soul. You shine through the windows of our heart, the windows of our mind, and come out of our mouth as words. It's like a red carpet for all who will just who will receive Jesus Christ and walk in the path of holiness right into glory, right into your presence, right into victory, right into eternal life, right into the kingdom. You translate us there to be with you in the secret place of the Most High God. It's only secret to the lovers of God, but it's, it's wide open to us because we know you there. It's been hidden from the world, but it's been shown in our hearts by your Spirit. And in this place, no one can separate us from you. Nothing can separate us from the love of God inside this holy place. Let your breath be my breath. Let your eyes be my eyes. Let your nose be my nose. Let your ears be my ears. Let your heart be my heart. Let your hands be my hands. Let your feet be my feet as we are united as one. Perfect harmony. Much peace in your presence, God. Just gotta be still and know that you are God. A ton of peace right now. <laughs> we could go there anytime. This is like the timeless place where there's no time there. It's outside of time. It's outside of the natural realm. It's an eternity. This is where a day with the Lord is, is a thousand years. And you can just come back and pop back into time. This is where you can grow at an accelerated rate. This is where you know your Father.
Here in your arms, here in your arms No place I would rather be There's no place I would rather be No place I would rather be Here in your arms, here in your arms Shabba dabba do. Oh. <laughs> All I really did was just take my focus off of the earth. Take my focus off of the video. Take my focus off of me. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> I was just remembering. Show the lady. I was just remembering the father. For this video, holy shit, man. Okay, Lord, let me tell them about the last one. Oh, shut up, not every good, but yeah, this could be. I don't know if I can. Um, yeah, I was, I was remembering. There's a lot of, there's a lot of peace inside the Prince of Peace Hall. I was remembering when I was destroyed as a person and oh my God, I like everything in my life just absolutely turned, you know, into a very devastating situation. And there was nothing I could do to fix it. And, uh, and I was just praying in tongues and, you know, it's another time when I just jumped through the Word of God. I was reading it, the scripture in the Bible study and Revelation 4 pops in my mind. Well, not in my mind, but through the scripture. It jumped out at me and I didn't understand it until, I think it was actually the end of Revelation chapter 3. Where the Bible says, he who overcomes will sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame, and I'm sat down with my father in his throne. That's what it felt like just now. Like, it feels like I'm, I'm just sitting with God, like, and I just want to reach over and grab his arm. And, because I was remembering this time, Shaka. That's what I was doing. Well, I came out of the Bible study. I didn't understand the scripture. I just thought it was really amazing how there was so much life on it. And I was in my car, just driving in my car, listening to an audio sermon on my iPhone 4 <laughs> through the speaker in my car. Um, this car this car passed away recently, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's okay. All things are made new. Thank you, Jesus. But, uh, I was just like, God help! My life is destroyed! Even my confidence in God was shaken. I, everything was just shaken to the core. I was shaken. It was nothing like, oh, it was the worst time of my life. Nothing even comes close to like being that devastated. And uh, I'll tell you what it is, but I'm not going to tell you. So just, just the worst thing in life happened to me that could ever happen in this life and so I'm like God help and I'm like driving 
praying for help. Shakara, I'm trying to go to the throne room of grace the best I know how. And uh, as I'm driving, the presence of God just boom, floods through my car. And a jet stream of tears roll down my cheek. And I'm so cool, and I'm just holding the steering wheel. And I've, I'm gone. I got translated. It's like Jesus said, like, you know, no one's ascended into heaven save the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And he said that when he was on the earth. Well, we're sitting with Christ in heavenly places now. And my body was on the earth. I could feel the steering wheel with my body. But my spirit uh, was with God in, uh, in heaven. And I, I could feel my spirit man holding somebody's arm. And, uh, and I could feel this love just billowing through me. At first it felt like the presence of God in the car, but then pff, I'm somewhere else and I'm holding my father's, I know it's the father. I'm holding his arm and I can feel unconditional love. The purest love, the purest presence that you, like you, I mean, you worship God in spirit and truth. You feel the tears, the love, the peace. This is like amped up to infinity. You can't measure it. <laughs> You can't measure you can't measure this love. It's immeasurable, it's infinite. And he just kept washing through me and washing through me. I'm holding his arm. This is his little boy who's just messed up. I try to control my emotions. I'll give you all control, God, whatever. <laughs> and I'm holding the phone. Uh, I just realized the joy, the joy of the Lord is His joy. You're not like trying to cap off the spirit of the joy of the Lord. You know, it's the fruit of the spirit, so it's the spirit of joy. It's God's joy. <laughs> yeah, don't stop the flow of the spirit of the joy of the Lord. <laughs> it's His joy coming through you. <laughs> It'll give you strength. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's not where I'm trying to go right now. I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> oh, I love it, Lord. Okay, I'm holding on to His arm. Billows of unconditional love. Like, you can't measure the height, the depth, the width, the breadth, the thickness, the, the, I'm in this ocean. It's like being drowned to death in the ocean of God's love. It's like the deeper you go, you know how the deeper you go in the ocean, the more it presses you or like it crushes things. It's like that. But in heaven, it's like the deeper you go into the Father's love, the more you feel life, the more you feel freedom, the more you feel peace, the more you feel acceptance, the more you feel oh, all the good things that you've ever experienced times infinity. And then then some was flowing through me as a, as a waves of glory and peace and love. And I'm absolutely destroyed. And I'm holding the steering wheel because this person betrayed me in the worst possible way you can imagine. I've since forgiven this person, but at the time, uh, I'm like, I, I look over, it's, I can't see his face, but I see his face, but I can't see his face. It's just light, this, this white brightness coming from his face. I can't even barely see his arm. It's just light. What does God look like? He looks like pure light, love. God looks like love, and His light and His love goes through you. What do you eat in heaven? You eat light, you eat love, you eat His, everything is, comes out of God and it reflects God because He fills everything there. And I'm holding His arm and, and, I, and I look at Him and it's like, <gasps> it's like the woman caught in adultery all over again. He's he, he's looking at something. He's not looking at me. I mean, you're in heaven. You get the love, the peace, and the whoa. I feel it now, even here, talking about it, talking about it. I, I look at him, and he's like, he's like, he's God is heaving, just, just to pour out love upon this person. And I look to see what he's looking at, and it's like I had like my vision 
It was like the Starship warp drive, you know, in Star Trek. <laughs> Where everything goes like through, like just going through space. It looked like that. From this dimension where I was in heaven, I, I believe it was the third heaven, I don't know. I was on the throne of God with God. It was like whoever overcomes, I did not feel like an overcomer, but I kept clinging to God. Uh, you know, even though everything inside of me did want to let go and give up. By the strength of God, I, I hung on to God. And uh, I was there. He considered me an overcomer. And I just saw myself as a weak, weak, beat up, destroyed individual, barely hanging on. You know, it's not how I see myself, it's how God sees us that counts. And I look to see what he's looking at, and then I, my, my vision just goes like supersonic. I saw the earth come into my focus, then I saw like the nations and right into this person who devastated me. I look back at God and I can see <gasps> he's just heaving. I could see and I sense that that unconditional love that was just pouring through me. He was so desiring that this person can receive that unconditional love. And the thing that broke my heart right there is when I saw that is like, I love this person conditionally. I would love this person if they met my standards or even this, the religious standards that I created in my own mind. I love this person if they would basically believe the same way as me. I love this person if they didn't sin. If you sin, I'll remove myself from you. You know? I would love this person if. God's not like that. He takes away the if. He just loved this person unconditionally. It's not because he had love to give. It's because when you look at him, that's who he is. The Father is love. That's what emanates from him. He wants to give himself a selfless love. For God so loved the world. For God so loved wicked people. For God so loved you. For God so loved me. For God so loved the world, everyone in it, that he gave Jesus his best. What are you giving Jesus? <laughs> we need to give Jesus to the world. Living epistles. How do you do that? As I looked at him in heaven and I saw who he was, I've read about unconditional love, but until you see it, demonstrate it, it changes your nature. You cannot give unconditional love until you receive unconditional love from the Father to give. Freely you have received, now you're responsible to give. Freely you have received, freely give. His love washing through me empowered me to let that love wash others. John the Baptist baptized people in the river in an old covenant. In the new covenant, we baptized by the river. When Peter spoke, Holy Spirit came down and he baptized them. Holy Spirit and Peter's spirit baptized. And Peter even had the thought, well, I would, you know, I've never eaten an unclean animal, God. No, God says, go to all the streets and the highways and the byways and ask them to come to my supper. Even Peter had this religious mindset. It's like, well, I can't invite sinners to come. They have to come to a church, say the sinner's prayer. <laughs> That's not the way the new covenant works. The new covenant, you've, you let the Holy Spirit do the works. He comes through your words. He comes through your heart. He comes through your atmosphere. And he baptizes through your open vessel. When you yield to him, he comes through you and he does the works. How shall any hear unless someone first preaches? Well, then open your mouth and let the river of life flow through it. I looked at what he was looking at. It was that person. And I looked back at him and he, wouldn't, he didn't look back at me. I felt like it was a rebuke for loving conditionally. And I feel like this is a rebuke to the entire church that we have loved conditionally. You have to be in my same 
you have to be a Baptist. <laughs> you have to be a Pentecost. You have to be non-denominational, <laughs> which is a denomination. It's funny. You have to be a Catholic. You have to be that. No, you don't. Whoever's in the sun, God is well pleased. And if you're not in the sun, come to the feast. Come eat him. Come eat the Savior of the world. What do you think he was placed in a manger for? You know what a manger is? It's a feeding trough for animals. Jesus, the light of the world. In the Old Testament, he was called the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord came and sat was placed in a feeding trough for animals. Why? So that the animals would come, which is mankind, would come and eat him and take on his angelic nature, which is Christ's nature. It is the will of God that you feast upon God, Jesus Christ, and receive his nature and be born again and communicate with God and have life more abundantly. It is the will of God that you do that. Jesus was placed in a feeding trough so that the animals of the earth, which is the 666 nature, even in Christians, it doesn't matter. You put labels on it, it doesn't matter. It's only Christ's nature that is triple three, who has called, it's the mind of Christ. Call upon me, Jeremiah 33 verse three, call upon me and I'll show you things that you do not know. It's, it's, a, it's a constant revelation of things you don't know. It's the constant revelation of a communication of God revealing things to you. It's the mind of Christ. 333. 666 is the pride. It's pride. It's the, it's the number of the beast. It's the animal nature. It's, you know, Paul said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus, which was religious people confronting the spirit. Natural mind fights the things of the spirit. The natural mind is enmity against God. Romans chapter 8. It's the natural mind, the beast nature. It's all about the mind of your eyes. It's all about Holy Spirit. It's all about the Father. It's all about Jesus Christ himself. It's all about God, right? Christ in you, the hope of glory. But you get there through Christ. There's no other way. All other ways are, they're just full of liars. The only way to get back to God the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus Christ to you, the real Jesus, not the religious Jesus. Not the Catholic Jesus, not the Pentecostal Jesus, not the Methodist Jesus, not the Presbyterian Jesus, not the Jehovah's Witness, not the Mormon, not the Buddhist. You know, the real Jesus Christ, the living Word of God, who sets your heart on fire and shows you who God is. If there's no glory and it's just natural, it's religion and demonic. You've been, you've, you've come to the gospel of glory <laughs> where the substance of God is. The substance of who? Yes. You shall all be taught of the Lord. Who will teach you? You have no need that any man teach you. Well, who teaches you then? You may hurt from a man. You may hear from a donkey who God's opened their mouth. You may hear from nature. You may hear in a dream. You may hear in a vision. Holy Spirit may just fall upon you. But it's the Holy Spirit who teaches you and leads you into all truth. Men will lead you to themselves and make you slaves of religion. Holy Spirit will lead you to Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and life, Jesus said. Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Holy Spirit always leads you to Jesus. And Jesus presents you to the Father in a perfect circle of love. Because in Him you are complete. So I, I saw all these things in heaven and it became real to me through the substance. You know, the Bible, never, like I read about the unconditional love. I can't do it in my own strength. It wasn't until I had that experience with God and through the scripture, where I entered through that scripture into an experience with God, where I could actually have the ability to love unconditionally. It wasn't until I have, till I seen Jesus like, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. It wasn't, that, it wasn't until I received that grace and the truth that will cut my heart. The grace of that love of God coming through Jesus, until I seen it, 
where it empowered me not to go and sin it, sin that same sin again. Because that, that love was selfless. That love from the Father was unconditional. And it changed me. You can read about it till the cows come home. You can memorize the Bible from cover to cover. But it's not the Bible that changes you. We, we are changed by beholding Him. Who is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Yeah, read the Bible. I, I said I read it. For like, you know, I don't even know how long the video is, but I read Proverbs 10 chapters of Proverbs. I love the Bible. But I love the God of the Bible more than what he said. Because I love what he's saying. <laughs> I mean, I love my wife. I love it when she texts me on Facebook. But I love my wife more than her texts on Facebook. And so, it's, it's the experiences that you have with the Spirit that is a tree of life. The knowledge of good and evil is just text about something that you never, ever experience. Because it's knowledge about. It's, it's almost, the good of the knowledge of good and evil is just religion, where it teaches you about something, but it never brings you into the experience. It's like, yeah, Jesus is unconditional love. Jesus is, Jesus is great. But you never experience the unconditional love of God. You never experience the greatness of God. You never hunger and thirst after righteousness because you're filled with the letter that kills. And that the enemy can twist the scriptures and to make it to make make it fit what you believe. But you're never fit to believe. That's what religion will do to you. They they twist the scriptures to make to make the scriptures fit what they believe, but it never makes you fit to believe what the Spirit of God is saying. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you're encouraged by that. So hunger and thirst after righteousness. Righteousness is God's Spirit. I, I can't remember the dictionary term for it. It's like right standing with God. Well, if you're right standing with God, you're standing right inside of God being electrocuted by the love of God and the peace of God that passes all understanding. So yeah, righteousness is being totally obliterated by the Spirit of God. <laughs> righteousness is standing right in God. In the most holy place, you're standing in the peace of God that passes all understanding. You're standing in the faith of God by receiving His words, washing through your soul and your spirit. You're wearing the crown of life. You're, you, <laughs> you called out to wisdom and understanding. They're your sister and kinsman, I think the Proverbs say. Are your, <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom will give you a crown of life, I think the Bible says. <laughs> I'll have to read it to find out what it says. And then I want to enter into that, to that life that the crown that I'm actually wearing is, you know. <laughs> Listen, man, Jesus took a crown of thorns to give you, place upon you, the crown of life. What is that? It means that cursed thinking, he takes it out and he puts upon you the crown of life. So your mind is wrapped with the mind of Christ. Your spirit searches the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals it to your spirit and into your mind. So that you can know the mind of Christ. You can know the will of God. And I've been telling you the will of God, this whole video, is to go straight to Jesus and eat Him. Feast upon Him. And you'll morph. You'll take on the image of God. And the, the image of Satan or the image of the natural human, human thinking, you know, that you've been born again away from, <laughs> you'll realize that, wow, you really are seated with Christ in heavenly places in your spirit. Wow, you can really have the experiences that everybody in the Bible had from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. You can really see angels like people in the Bible have seen. You can really hear the audible voice of God like people in the Bible have heard. You can really experience the love of God like people in the Bible have experienced. You can really get caught up by the locks of your hair. You can really get translated into the kingdom of light like Enoch. Actually, you already have your spirit. You've been translated into the kingdom of light 
but your body is still here to project that light back into the world as the light of the world. It's good news. The gospel is good news. Why? What is it? It's being yoked to Christ. Christ is spirit. You're one with the spirit. You're not yoked to slavery anymore and of the flesh and being dragged down by the cares of this world. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. What does that mean? Jesus, oh, this thing is really stressing me out. I'm giving this to you. And uh, I thank you for the empowerment right now. Your strength, God. I draw from your strength to just walk through all these problems. Sometimes the problems don't go away, but the stress of them does. Because you have a new mindset, and it's not your mind. <laughs> I had all these things, the car broke down, everybody's like raging on me. And all I did, you know, I, I walked through the problems in the manifest presence of God. I was like, I just wrote down what I, was, what I believe I'm supposed to do. I'm like, okay, God, this is my plan. <laughs> it's like Hezekiah, he, he all, you know, King Sennacherib was coming against him. And, and he just presented his case before the Lord. And that's what I did. I just presented everything before the Lord. And then I just did what I believed was best. And I'll listen, you know, I, okay, let's do this. And I'd sit down in a pizza place, presence of God, sit down at the school and the Holy Spirit, put on a video. Someone's worshiping God, I'm getting hit with glory waves. What's God saying? What's the, what's the answer to the problems? The river of life. What's the answer to the, all the problems of the world? Draw near to God, He'll draw near to you and through you. And He'll wash away the dust of the earth. He'll wash away the serpent. Wash away the snakes in the mind. The river of life. The higher you rise, you, the higher you go above the rat. You know, they can't breathe up there. The rats, they'll just die in a plane or whatever. The higher you go in Christ, the more all the little slithery serpents and the rats and the spiders and witchcraft just falls off. And then you don't stop there. You keep going until you have that encounter with God's unconditional love. You don't stop until you see Jesus face to face where his love just washes through, washes all the shame off of you. You don't stop until you march boldly to the throne room of grace and receive his face. You might say, you might come up with this religious thing. Well, it's, it's more blessed to, to not see than to see. <laughs> I used to believe that too. I would say, oh, I can't see Jesus. I can't see Jesus because it's more blessed to not see than to see. Because that's what he said to Thomas, who was an unbel you know, not believing. You know, one of the blessings is to see. What do you think you're drawing near to God for? <laughs> God, I'm drawing near to you, but I don't want to see your face because it's more blessed to us. You know, where do we get these ideas? If you draw hunger and thirst after right, of course you're going to be drinking him. Of course you're going to see him. The desire for all humanity is to come out of the fallen nature and into his risen nature so you can face to face communicate with him. So you can be changed into his image. Moses sat face to face with him and he was changed. Even so much so that when he went before all the Pharisees and religious people around him, he had to put a veil over him. But that veil is taken away in Christ now. We don't have to put a veil over us. Just tell it the way it is, man. I like this Bible, man. I've been reading this today. This is a, the Passion Translation. It's, Hebra it's Hebraic. Let's put the Passion back in our relationship with God. And may God's grace come busting through your face. Tidal waves of glory. You don't have any, you don't have need that even I teach you. You can go to a donkey. <laughs> you can go, better yet, you can go straight to Jesus Christ himself. You don't know that you are in him and he's in you. Of course you know that. Well then go to him. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go fill my earth suit with a hamburger now. 
I hope you enjoy this little talk and this little little journey that we took into uh, the most holy place. And listen, you don't have to. I mean, I went there. I was there was a, like there was a peace. Uh, I used to go there a lot when I would just lay on my bed and just meditate on God. Just meditate on the Holy Spirit. Just meditate on Jesus. Just meditate on the Word of God. Just meditate on the Bible. Meditate on my prophetic experiences. Meditate, and then I start going into new experiences with God. And it seems like He's playing hide and go seek with me. He just wants me to go and seek Him, and He's hiding. But He always leaves a fragrance of His presence, and I just jump onto the trail of His presence and follow Him. And then I find Him. And I just get boom, just glory nuggets of glory, and He just He just implodes inside me with His unconditional love. So if you're hungry and thirsty after righteousness, you should have you should know by now what to go do. <laughs> it is the will of God. It's in John 7 or 8 or 6 or 7, I don't know. I'm not a scholar. I'm just I'm just one of God's kids who loves him a lot. And uh Yeah, where your heart is there your treasure will be also. You know, just go go look at your treasure. <laughs> Go look at the treasure, that, that pearl of great price buried inside your field. Hallelujah. Just look at him. You don't even have to do anything. Just, just look at Jesus, man. Just let his fire consume you. Just, if you don't know what Jesus looks like, read Revelation chapter 1 out loud for like five days straight, just over and over again. And then just just see him, and just ask him to sh show me you, God. Show me you, Jesus. I think I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go eat a hamburger, and then I'm gonna go see Jesus. <laughs> well, this has been a, this has been a nice time in the presence of God. I hope you, uh, are enjoying your Christianity. If there's no glory, it's not Christianity because Christ is the glory. If it's just a bunch of rules and regulations, then well, you're probably under the curse of the law and you need to get above that. Hallelujah. Oh.